Good afternoon. Very, very nice to see you all. Uh, I'm Russell Pierce of the Community Council for Somerset. You're watching uh, Talking Cafe, and I'm delighted to say that today we have Clive Reimer with us, who is the Community Engagement and Partnership Manager for Mediquip. Mediquip is a medical equipment provider, and I'm very, very pleased to welcome him. And Clive, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and the marvellous Mediquip. Indeed. Thank you, Russell. Very kind. Thank you for, for having me here today. Um, should I go myself first or do you want to go through Mediquip first? What's, what's best for the audience? Just, 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 just a, a, a flavour of how you come to be where you are and then Mediquip, if that's okay. Okay, so yeah, so my history goes back about uh, 12 months uh, when I joined the, the organisation that had the previous contract. Um, and I joined them in a role that was called a CHIA, which was a Community Health and Engagement Officer. Um, and in brackets was clinical. And I was employed on the basis of my lived experience and that within the industry that we work, it's deemed that we need to be more aware of the esoterics, more, more behind the scenes of what people need and want from a, a health provider. So my lived experience is that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm a widower. Um, I have had health issues myself. Um, I would have been a carer for my late wife. I've got an autistic son. So I had a, this range of lived experiences that when I went to my, my previous employer, they said, yeah, that's what we're looking for. So that these, your role can go into the community, have some empathy of what's being faced and then have a, a, a coordinating and a coherent role that can then feed back and see what we're doing good, seeing what we're doing bad, what we're doing well, what we could do better. And so that role um, started off about February of last year. And then the company for which I know work, Mediquip, took over that contract. So the contract we're talking about now is the provision of community equipment and wheelchairs, essentially, for Somerset. And that's um, a provision commissioned by Somerset County Council and the NHS. And so I was 2 would over, which is the legal process to go from one employer to another when a contract is exchanged. And they transferred my role into that which uh, you described, the community engagement and partnership manager. Right. So that's my lived experience. And what I do, I'm a conduit between our service users, the commissioners of the service, so Somerset County Council and, uh, so, and uh, the NHS, um, with the, the Mediquip service itself, and then also with wonderful, wonderful partners such as the Community Council for Somerset, who I work very closely with, with the village agents. Um, and village agents are everywhere, marvellous people. And I then work with other agencies as well, third sector um, and um, other commercial entities. Um, but the service we provide is specifically for the NHS. And I'm employed because I've been around the block and I've previously worked for the NHS. That's that's lovely. Thanks very, very much for that, Clive. It's interesting to hear of your, your personal experience, as you say, empathy that you can bring to that. Um, bef before you talk a bit more about Mediquip, just to sort of align people with what they can do, can people, members of the public, come to you directly or do they have to go via other people? They would, right, okay, so let's define other people. So we're talking medical professionals. Yeah. Med Mediquip, the, the contract that we have is the we are the provider of services that have been assessed for supply um, to, the, to patients of the NHS. So in order to use our services, there are a number of routes. One is to go if you are disabled or you're having support from an occupational therapist is to go through an occupational therapist or a physiotherapist uh -huh. and they will then assess the need of the person and then tell us what equipment to supply. We then supply that equipment, explain how it works, train, train or you know, show people how it works, hand that over to the, the medical professional to then go on and go into the detail of how that equipment works. And we will then service that, that equipment over time, which is on extended loan for as long as the person needs it. The, option, the other options are that you can go through your GP. Um, that's another route. They will often then refer you to a, another medical professional. Or we're going to talk later about the Somerset Independent Living Centres, and those can be contacted directly and have an assessment through them as well. Lovely. That's very, very clear. Thanks. If you've got an OT, that's fine. Yep. If you need to go through a professional, the GP. And always, I'm sure, if they contacted you, um, you, you would refer them to the right yeah right way of contacting who they need to contact indeed the the, the catch-all is to call either adult services or child services 
Um, and so we've got the number for adult services coming up, mainly because that's the service that where decisions are made after the age of 18 or 18 to 25 is when the service transitions into adult services. With young people in the children's services, they tend to be monitored very closely through school and through pediatric specialists. Um, so this often those referrals are picked up automatically. So we tend to tell people that it's mainly adults that we're telling to go to adult services. The number will be coming up later on the slide that I've got for you um, or through child services for pediatrics. That's lovely. Clive, thank you very, very much indeed. You, you referred to some slides. So you're going to yeah. take some, a bit of a journey. Let's have a journey, Russell. Let's enjoy a journey of excitement. Let's, journey. Let's do that. OK, so um, going back completely on what we said a moment ago is can people contact us? My role is specifically contactable. So what we've got on screen here, that's my name, that's my email address and that's my office telephone number. If after this presentation anything is not clear, please get in touch. That is my role. My role is to engage with service users and those who wish to engage in the service. Um, I prefer email because I can then pick those up um, sort of quite uh, routinely as I'm going through the day. And I'm encouraged not to, I do look at them after hours as well. So email is favorite. That gives um, that gives me a chance to, to answer um, everybody who comes through to me. So that's my role, please get in touch. Lovely. Where we're based, we're based in Taunton. Uh, we cover the whole of traditional Somerset. We have another depot based in Western that covers that area in North Somerset. But essentially, the service that I'm talking to you about today covers from Minehead over to Froome, then from Froome down to Wellington. So it's the traditional Somerset area. The map we got on screen um, just shows you roughly where we are. We're on the Prizewood Industrial Estate. And although you can't come to this, these premises without um, a prescription or without an assessment or to come here just randomly, I do put the address up because we will receive back equipment that you no longer need. Oh, and wow. so it's important I give you this address here. Um, and again, we'll come on to that. There's a slide coming up um, about that. And it's very important to understand that we will take back equipment that isn't needed. And essentially, the equipment that we give out to people is on loan. It's not a gift. It's on loan from the NHS, but free of charge. So the next slide here really is just the headers on what we actually do. So again, just to recap, MedEquip for Somerset, we provide the services commissioned by Somerset County Council and the NHS. And we then deliver those services free of charge to the end user on the basis of the NHS service. Um, and we do those after assessment by a medical professional. So we provide community equipment, and that could be anything from what we call a community bed or a specialist bed or an examination bed that needs to be in somebody's home. Um, it might be toileting aids, such as a raised toilet seat or some kind of um, framework to help somebody stand or sit to the toilet and transfer and mobility aids, such as walking frames, walking sticks um, and lots of variations on that. So with community equipment, we provide that on a number of different bases. We work with the end of life team at the hospitals. So what would happen if somebody was being discharged with end of life and had a very, very short life expectancy, we would prioritize the equipment going out to them. We would do that within four hours of instruction to any part of Somerset. So that person could be discharged from hospital, arrive at their home. They have a bed, a commode, walking aid, standing aid, whatever equipment they need to be as comfortable as possible at home and then live out the rest of their time with their family as comfortably as possible. Then going to the other end of the spectrum is that we would deliver in several days, but perhaps somebody needs a replacement cushion um, for their specialist chair. So there's a degree of services that are defined by the need of the service user. So that's community equipment. Wow. We also provide wheelchairs. And I've separated these out because there are a number of ways to get a wheelchair. Um, the legal situation is that in law, everybody's entitled to a wheelchair assessment. Now that doesn't mean you'll get a wheelchair, um, but if, if you believe you are entitled to a wheelchair, you can have an assessment. Waiting list is quite long. We are still, it, it may sound strange, but this time on, we are still suffering from the effects of COVID uh, for no other reason that the very vulnerable people weren't attending for appointments during COVID. So once the COVID threat had reduced, those most vulnerable people felt safe to come out. And we, we've got that two year backlog of, of vulnerable people. So for a basic wheelchair, again, the same process is that somebody could contact their occupational therapist or medical professional. And then as MedEquip, we would 
provide that wheelchair. We would deliver that to their home. A quick explanation of how it works. If there's any specialist directions needed, then the medical professional would take up that training. I then add in there the word specialist wheelchairs because we then work with our business partners and our service partners, AJM, who are in the same building on the same telephone number, but they have a specialty of wheelchairs that are provided for those people with, with very serious and profound difficulties. And that might be severe scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, uh, maybe um, amputations or um, where specialist chairs are needed, perhaps with specialist foams and supports within the wheelchair. Now, again, to contradict what I said before, we do those assessments through our OTs or occupational therapists on site. So there's a slightly different assessment process. We do have clinics on site, but there would need to be an initial um, uh, uh, presentation to us by a medical professional. But then it's our, profession, our professional OTs that pick up on the assessments. So Great. that so is if somebody wants a wheelchair. Sorry, they they go to the OT. The yeah. OT will come to you, and at that stage, yeah. you determine. It's a yeah. specialist you need, and yeah. then you you drive it in that direction. We do indeed, and we, we then have the clinics in house, um, specialist physios, specialist occupational therapists who've done this for many years, um, and we then may have to go through very very complex and expensive process of body molding, uh, specialist you know very expensive chairs that could be many thousands of pounds. But again, that is free at the point of delivery uh -huh. um, through the NHS. If if you have that medical condition that needs that wheelchair. Um, you know, it will be provided to your need. And I'll add in there that there's within the wheelchairs, there's also a possibility of what's called the personal wheelchair budget. Um, and those people who have disabilities might be aware of personal budgets where they're allocated funding for their personal care. And with a personal wheelchair budget, the information of which is provided when you have your wheelchair assessment is that you can look to have the wheelchair you want over and above that which you need. Oh, and I always think that, that that's a good rule to remember is the services that we will provide is what somebody needs. Um, and I do often talk to people who say, well, that's, that's not really what I want, but they, you will be looked after with what you need. So there are possibilities, especially within the wheelchair service. If you want one with sparkly, sparkly dangles on the, on the handlebars, then you can add a bit of money to that if, if that's what you, you choose. Excellent. So I didn't want to be facetious, but it's a bit like sort of pimping your ride. Ah, ah. It, and some of them are beautifully pimped, may I say, Russell. Beautifully yes. pimped. I mean, I've been doing this for a few years now, um, on and off. And yeah, there's some ima real imagination out there. So and it's good fun, especially for the young people. So right. these are opportunities. Okay. Um, so moving on, we do ceiling track hoists. Um, and this is where, again, it's an in-house um, process. The engineers are based here. They work under the banner of AJM, but we're all in the same building on the same telephone number. And this is where people have to have permanent aids fixed to their house to convey them perhaps from bed to wheelchair or from wheelchair to toileting facilities or from a, 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 from a wheelchair to a chair. So this is a permanent track that's fixed to the ceiling. And where somebody's got very complex health issues, these, this can be perhaps four or five tracks um, I'm waving my hand around the camera there. I appreciate you can't see. Um, but uh, there may be four or five tracks in the house that go from room to room and, and from facility to facility. Um, but again, that, that service is there and it was prescribed through a medical professional. Excellent. OK, community engagement. So I've got my young friend here on the right. Um, he is in the uniform or the, the garb of the Somerset County Cricket Club cricket foundation and I'm, i get told off if i get this wrong because they are the the, the cricket foundation as opposed to somerset county cricket club so while they're on site at the county cricket club they're at the a foundation that support those people with disabilities or a disadvantage or a vulnerable who would like to play cricket and so what we've got there is a sponsorship arrangement where medequip have, have provided some assistance to take cricket out across the um across the county to various cricket clubs and i, I think if my math is correct there's something like 143 clubs across the county where wow. they have the, where they're looking to offer a facility for people with disabilities to have accessible um cricket and so if you I haven't got it on screen here, but it's certainly worth it if you are disabled and fancy a, a go at cricket, look up the, the, the cricket, the Somerset County Cricket Foundation. Absolutely fabulous people. Um, I've been along to some practices and we're doing support work with them. Absolutely amazing. And so with my job, I get to do wonderful things like that. Well, that's, that's, um, that's, that's, a, that's a fantastic idea. That's, that sounds really, yeah. really good, uh, 
client. They, they, they've they got an event day coming up in May. I think it's May the 17th that needs confirming where they, they've got the opportunity for very special educational needs schools and various in, invited guests to go along and have a taster. And then with some other accessible sports as well. And Somerset, we have a very good history of supporting accessible and disabled sport. Um, again, you know, you look at the tennis, you look at the, the um, show jumping, the horse riding um, and some of the Paralympics. We, we've got quite a few in, in county. So we, we do really look after our Paralympians and dis disability sports. So greatly encouraged. That's um, if, if somebody wanted to get involved with that, Clive, go to your website, phone you. What would be the best way? If, if they wanted to, I'm, I'm guessing that the numbers wouldn't be huge because, you know, it's one of those things that they can come to me personally. I will then direct them to the Somerset County Cricket Club Fan, Cricket Foundation, um, which is online. But if they get stuck with that, come to me and I'll then forward them on to that. And the manager there at the cricket club is a guy called Steve Gass. And I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning his name because he's plastered all over the, the uh, YouTube. Uh, so if you once you've finished watching this on YouTube, Go along to Disability Cricket Somerset, and that's your next video to watch. Marvelous. And then, and then come back to CCS for the next guest, whoever was uh, on next. <laughs> Brilliant. I like uh, yeah. So community engagement. So we, we do a lot of that. A lot of my work is I, I go out into the community. I work with carer groups. I work with specialist groups. Uh, I'll put some ideas down here that I, I have done my dementia training. So with dementia aware, we then go into the other the physical talking cafes um, um, for the dementia groups. Um, I've recently been involved in the acute stroke uh, process. We do consultation on pediatric services. And the one that we're looking at in detail at the moment is sensory loss. So we don't just stop at the services that we've been commissioned to provide. We look at what else is needed within the county and then feed that back into the commissioners. So we have a consultation role as well because we, we access between 600 and 1,000 individual contacts every week. So that's a lot of contact of people who have specific needs. So we do take a lot of feedback. We do then take that to meetings with the commissioners and we look to see how we can either enhance our service to support them or the commissioners will take that idea away and then look to develop something behind the scenes, possibly not with us, possibly with another provider. Um, but we're very involved in feeding back the opinions of our service users. Um, I, I've covered consultations there already, so that's the type of thing. I, I go to lots and lots of meetings, and I, and I network with lots of people. And I'm, I'm going to say, I don't. I, the the village agents are wonderful. They're they're always around, and obviously they're connected with CCS. Um, and it's it's good to then meet these other people who are motivated to actually go out into the community and and, and help. And so I, I work with a number of the village agents to support those um, the carer groups and some of the other events going on. So that, that's important. Lovely. What what are you finding is the uh, the biggest and the most difficult challenge at the moment, Clive? The uh, we've. Inter okay, let's talk about condition. For, for some curious reason, we seem to have had a lot of referrals for Parkinson's disease. So there do seem to be waves and patterns of those people that need help. And I don't know why, whether there's been a particular initiative for, for people to, I know there's often, um, it's what we pick up in, in the broadcast media, but often you see a campaign for prostate cancer. So then obviously with clinics would let all people go and have their prostate um, checked gentlemen having their prostate checked you might get people you might get a a, a process on um strokes so you then we tend to get an uplift on people perhaps who, who will actually check themselves out and take that advice to get checked out and so we've been having more more people presented with parkinson's disease i, I don't know that and then before that we had a lot of people presenting with uh, motor neuron disease which is a terminal right. condition we knew the reason for the motor neuron disease was because of covid and those vulnerable people coming through covid and then needed urgent help the biggest problem any business is facing at the moment is uh, supply chain issues, um, staffing issues, specialist issues. Uh, we're quite lucky here in, in the staff that we have because we took over the existing contract. Uh, a number of staff were transferred over through the 2P process um, and we've taken on new um, occupational therapists in the last few months. Um, so in the office next to me at the moment, we've got two occupational therapists who then advise on the service. But that is a problem, getting qualified staff to apply for a job. And then the supply chain issue, we still have issues with, with um, equipment coming out of China. Uh, as we know, a lot of equipment is supplied in China. If it's just that one microchip or yeah. that one piece of electronics that we can't get, that stops the whole device um, coming into the UK. 
so I don't think we face any different issues to any other part of British industry, really. Um, it's just you have to have to then work through that. We've got a good management team that, that works through that. Absolutely. And it helps, as you were saying at the beginning of the broadcast, to take things back afterwards. You're saying that it's on low. Yeah, we're going to, yeah I'm going to come. I've got, a special, I've got a special slide just for that, Russell. So oh. we're going to go. And I'm going to manage. Well, I'm going to mention manage at home, but I'm going to come on to that as well. Let's, let's go for another slide. I think we've, we've okay. had enough of it. We, we've seen that one, haven't we? So let's see where we go next. Can I just point out, I did mention earlier about the Somerset Community Independent Living Centres. This is a route to get um, an assessment or advice or to actually view some of the equipment that is available through the NHS or can be purchased privately. So what I've got up there is their contact details. The, the 0300 number there is adult services or goes through to um, the adults care team. And the Somerset Independent Living Centres have two showrooms, shall we call them, or two assessment centres, one in Wellington and one in Shepton Mallet. I need to emphasise, or they'll tell me off, is that this is by appointment only. Very sad, if you turn up and rap on the door, they won't be able to help you because space is, at a, is, is nominal and all the space they have is either used for, for clinics or for displaying equipment. So they don't have the facility of, of accepting just random visitors, but call the 0300 number. You can then go along to these um, places, uh, Chapter Mallet and Wellington, have a look at the equipment such as stair lifts, toileting aids, um, bed aids. One of mine that we, we're working on quite a bit at the moment is a vibrating mat that goes under a pillow for people with hearing issues. So they can tell if somebody's at the door or if there's a phone ringing. Um, uh, different variations on walking and standing aids. Um, and there are small, or what we call small aids available for sale there as well. Although the majority of stuff is to be seen, get an opinion on and then go to a medical professional and ask for it to be prescribed free of charge. But some small aids can be purchased. So, so that's the so, uh, they're very well worth a, a, a contact them and they have a fabulous website as well. Okay, so I, I was—I just love this. I, I don't I'm, do know how you stand on copyright on this, Russell. You might, have, <laughs> you might have to blur this before it goes out publicly, but I thought it was a lovely cartoon. Um, and I, I picked it because what I discovered historically is the number of people who had used walking frames, didn't need them anymore, and then grew tomatoes up them in their garden, um, which is wonderful. But seeing as they're, you know, 80, 90 pounds, some of them, perhaps more, if you no longer need the equipment, please, please, can we have it back? Right. What ha so all of the equipment that we supply, as I've said, and I'll, I'll express again, is free to the point to the point of delivery to the service user. It's provided through the NHS service, and it's then provided for as long as you need it. And I think it's very easy if you have a walking frame or a pair of crutches or a walking stick that you think I don't need these anymore. Put them in a cupboard, and then six months later you put them from a cupboard to the shed. And then a year later, you put them from the shed to outside the shed. And then a year after that, they go down the dump. And while the, the well, I shouldn't say dump, the recycling centres. And while we, we do work with the recycling centres, after they've been that, through that process of shed and then outside for a long period of time, often they're not recoverable. Yeah. However, if somebody uses a walking frame and we can then get that back from them once they've finished using it, that can come into our decontamination centre. Um, it can be checked decontaminated and cleaned up, repainted, sprayed, or you know whatever he's doing, new rubber bits put on, new screws, and made safe and made as good as new, go back into our stock and then rotated round again. And there's, there's many estimates, but it's reckoned if we do this pro properly, we could save the local NHS 15,000 pound a month. Right. Um, and it so is important. It is important, and especially when, without going too political, I think I can be um, unpolitical by saying there is certain unrest within the NHS community on payroll alone. And there are different people who, who would argue whether or not <clears throat> nurses or doctors should have more pay. But that to one side, there is obviously time limits and, and availability of equipment. If you can just claw those bits of equipment back in, it's that little bit to help help on the budget, on the NHS budget for Somerset. And the, the type of things we're looking back is anything that's been um, prescribed, um, if we provide one of these large community beds, again, they, they can be between anything between 700 and several thousand pounds. They tend to come back because people want them out of the way. But also these smaller frames, walking frames and wheelchairs, if we get them back, they can be decontaminated, cleaned up, made good and then reissued. And I say, or please don't use them to plant your bulbs in the garden. So uh, there we go. 
Um, yeah, should we go on to the next one? So, yeah. Yeah. where this brings so I mentioned this before as well, manage at home. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep harping back. I suppose it is my message, and this is what I say, is that what we do is we provide the free to point of delivery to the service user of equipment prescribed by NHS professionals. Um, so a physiotherapist, occupational therapist, doctor, nurse, whatever would say, right, my patient needs this piece of equipment. We then on the logistics side that they will deliver that, make sure it's in good order, and then service that piece of equipment for the life that it's needed. However, we also mentioned about the difference between need and want. So that provision on the NHS will always be on a need basis. And I mentioned that there is a facility to pay a little bit of extra money into the wheelchair process to have a, a, a change of option. What we have is the MediQuip catalogue called Manage at Home. Um, that's an online catalogue and a physical paper catalogue, which is quite rare nowadays. And when I go out to meetings, everybody's very excited for some reason to have a real paper catalogue to have a look through. And these are, I always think this is a brilliant ideas book. You can have a look through and think that's, you know, that I like that. Um, my role, I don't earn commission. I'm not here to say you must purchase from. Um, but the advantage is that this is what we do. A lot of the equipment in the um, catalogue is available, is purchased by the NHS for people who qualify. Um, but also buying through a medical specialist, a lot of it often, and it needs to be checked, is that the items are VAT free. So you might go some, I don't know, you could go to another retailer and have a look, but they may not be able to offer the VAT. So it's Manage at Home. The details are on screen there. You can buy through the website. You can phone the 0800 number. Um, you can contact me. And it's a fabulous service that um, has some very, very interesting items. That's fantastic. So you've got that variety there. And you say that, as you say, that even for people who aren't perhaps great online, there's the 0800 yeah. number. Yeah. And there's yeah. you and they can talk to you about the catalogue and the variety of stuff that you can get then. Indeed. With the physical catalogue, there's the traditional tear out page, um, like your old case catalogue from oh, people won't remember those, will they? But uh, people of a certain age will remember mum or nan's case catalogue where you tear out the order form from the back, fill that in and post it. If we remember what the post was and just write down the numbers and then you can do your payment in the usual way. And that will then be posted, delivered to your home. Um, and it, it's a cracking service. And then when I go out on some of my road shows and I go out to events, um, I take a selection of items with me. Um, and at the moment, we've got a lot of interest in dementia aids. Um, so talking uh, reminder, um, little buttons that remind people to turn the heating yeah. off or, you know, just different devices that help different, um, different, different disabilities. But let's say it's worth a look. It's a good ideas book. That's, that sounds brilliant. Well, Chris, we're coming up to the half hour. Thank you very, very much for a very informative and interesting talk. And My once pleasure. again, if people need to contact you, there's the website, there's yep. the email that's been going uh, down there, and there's, and there's the number there. Contact you or contact yep. the website. Indeed. All available. That, that's what I'm here for, and that's what we're here for. Lovely. Clive, it's been absolutely marvellous. Thank you very, very much indeed. You take care and all the best. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, Russell. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All the best. Cheers.